the Eastern Empire has assembled an enormous army, consisting of more than 900,000 troops, poised to launch an invasion into the forest of Jura. With the incredible abilities of Ramiris, the entire population, along with their buildings, in Tempest's capital has been relocated into the nation's intricate dungeon. While the primordial demons Testarossa and Ultima are engaged in fierce combat, on the front lines against the Empire, the remainder of the Imperial forces is attempting to breach the dungeon. Unbeknownst to the enemy, they are about to encounter a brutal and overwhelming counterattack from the formidable Tempest forces. Dwarf King Gazel fell silent as he saw the images on the large screen in front of him. With the help of Rimuru's technology, they were able to broadcast live battles on these screens. King Gazel, may I offer some advice? No need. I already know what you're going to say. Nevertheless, this matter requires addressing. Jane's tone was serious, and he was about to share important information with everyone in the room. These demonesses were highly unusual. The spell that incinerated those flying ships was a form of ritual magic. The greater spell, nuclear flame. It's a spell that even I would struggle to cast alone. But the magic used by that white-haired lady was even more problematic. A move called Death Streak. To my knowledge, it's not something the human body can control. It's a forbidden spell. They had all observed the peculiarities of these demonesses during their time together. Henrietta, the head of the Night Assassins, had looked into their backgrounds. These women were new recruits in the Tempest Federation and were rumored to have come out of nowhere, brought in by Rimuru's right-hand man, Diablo. Their true identities were of the demon race, and it was suggested that they were old acquaintances of Diablo. Rimuru had mentioned that he assigned them the roles of intelligence officers and dispatched them to supervise each division. Actually, I had my suspicions earlier. Could it be? In other words, your majesty had already guessed their true identities. Yes, but it's probably best not to know. That's nonsense. We've witnessed their extraordinary battles. It's scarier not to know the truth. The most frightening aspect of these demons was their combat prowess. Even Gazel appeared on the verge of exclaiming, You've got to be kidding. As he watched. Besides, we've already prepared ourselves for it. My liege, even you were shocked by them. Your emotions were written all over your face, so we've pieced some of the puzzles together. It happened during the night of that festival. Are you referring to the time when you were invited to the country of monsters? Now that you mention it, His Majesty Gazel was invited to some sort of secret meeting. We were all placed in the next room waiting. What happened then? Yeah, it's about Rimuru's secretary, or butler, I suppose. I believe you've all met him, too. Yes, you mean Diablo Dono. He seemed quite the gentleman. There seemed to be more to him than meets the eye. What's the deal with that guy? Those who attended the Tempest Founding Festival had all met Diablo. Henrietta had been shadowing Gazel, so she knew the appearances and names of Rimuru's executives. Only Jane was unaware, as she had left before Gazel dropped this shocking revelation. According to Elmesia, Diablo is a primordial. Hold on a second. What are you talking about? My liege, what did you just say? I'm saying he's a primordial. The one that comes to mind is Noir. However, he's not bound by his own domain and travels freely. There have been reports of people seeing him all over the world. Wait, hold on a second. My liege, hold on. What is it? What do you mean, what is it? Are you saying that this primordial, Noir, has become Demon Lord Rimuru's subordinate? That's indeed the case. That's a huge problem. Why have you kept quiet until now, could that mean? Miss Testarossa and Ultima were also. Hey, that would be just too. Too much? They're probably just Diablo's servants, some ancient demons, right? Besides those two, I heard that there were many others who were recruited by Diablo Dono out of nowhere. They all seem to be Diablo Dono's subordinates. However, the military attaché Testarossa, Chief Prosecutor Ultima, Chief Justice Officer Kara, these three seem to have been acquainted with Diablo for a long time. They treat each other as equals. Are you serious now? His Majesty Rimuru is going too far this time. So you're saying there are three people considered equal to a primordial. That's impossible. But what those two just did was, while they all wanted to deny the situation, the truth seemed fairly obvious when considering everything they had witnessed. At least Jane couldn't gauge the true strength of Testarossa and Ultima. That's why I told you it's best to stay ignorant. Regardless, I've made my decision. The moment I chose to believe in Rimuru, I resolved myself. He already has the Storm Dragon on his side, so it's too late to change now. You should all make up your minds too. Very well, I've always put my faith in you. If it's someone you trust, I won't oppose. Indeed, I've seen His Majesty Rimuru with my own eyes, and he's trustworthy. I agree with King Gazel. I am my lead shadow, I'll follow your lead. I have faith in you as well. I've met His Majesty Rimuru before he became a demon lord. It's just a bit unsettling to think that all the formidable powerhouses are on his side. 
but it's too late now. Besides, we can't do anything about it, so there's no use dwelling on it. Let's set this matter aside for now. Although the army approaching the central area of the Dwarven Kingdom had been defeated, the situation in the eastern region remained a stalemate. Additionally, a sense of danger still loomed over the Tempest Federation's capital, Rimuru. Speaking of which, that Rimuru, he's already achieved a significant victory. Is he not satisfied with the outcome? What a terrifying individual. No, it's possible that this wasn't Rimuru's intention. Perhaps the Empire hasn't realized the defeat of its army and continues its invasion. That's quite likely, my liege. Moreover, the Empire likely communicated through magic among its armies. Given the sudden turn of events from a state of war to such a resounding defeat, it would be hard to believe, even if witnessed in person. Others receiving reports of this massacre might question the authenticity, or treat it as the enemy's deception. I probably wouldn't believe such a report either. General Calgurio of the Empire is not incompetent, and I doubt he would decide to retreat at this point. He'd risk being seen as a coward. The people back in the Empire may not fully grasp the situation here and might only retreat when they face a proper defeat. 240,000 out of the 940,000 strong army that invaded the Great Jira Forest have been eliminated. Rimuru's victory is surely secured now. I suppose so, but it would be naive to let our guard down. That's not Rimuru's style. We need to ensure that this war is well documented to serve as a lesson. Let humanity remember never to challenge a demon lord. Yes, sir. To honor the sacrifices made, Gazel decided to see this war through to the end. Furthermore, he had to prepare for the worst-case scenario, should he ever become Rimuru's enemy. While hoping it would never come to that, he had to consider what to do if push came to shove. As a kingdom's ruler, he had to weigh all possible scenarios to minimize harm to his people. He couldn't stop simply because he faced an apparently insurmountable dilemma. However, going up against a primordial would be utter folly. They couldn't defeat Veldora either. Surrendering seemed to be their only option. Struggling with this seemingly impossible issue, Gazel felt deeply troubled. 